use here, the Silverback MDRX. Let's just dive straight in. So the first thing we look at here is the instruction manual. Very important to read this first. I know you're gonna be excited when you get this through, but please take the moment to just look through it. Very clear and concise, as with every other Silverback instruction manual, and then up and coming videos on how to do basic maintenance. So let's just dive straight in with the actual box here. So you can see this is the tan and black model. First thing we have here is a punch tool. Then we've got the other tools you're gonna to need for the rifle, the spare trigger board to make it a DMR. And then we also have the PCU jumper and the high nub. And we'll just take this out. It feels so nice in the hands. Weights towards the rear where you want it to be. And before we put the box away, we've also got the spare springs, which we'll show you how to change those later. One is going to be for DMR power, this is UK, and one is going to be for AG power limits in the UK. I'm not going to give you a tour of the box because it's a box, it's got an exploded diagram on the back, that's it. So here it is. Uh, first off, PCU jumper and the nub. So this is so we can, if we go to DMR, we can put more hot pressure down. Just the tools, torques, screws, etc. Punch tool, very, very handy to have, keep that safe. And here we have the separate trigger board. As I said, this will enable it to be a DMR. So if you go to semi or full auto, it will just fire a single shot. We're also using a different camera view today to try and make it easier for you. So I've got these recording glasses on. And we now have, these are the two springs we get. So this is going to be a slightly higher power than what's come in the rifle and then we've got the DMR, so AG and DMR springs. First off, just get the rifle a quick once over. You can see it's, uh, yeah, I think it's one of the best looking ballpups on the market. Wanted this MDR for a long time. So this is a dummy charging handle, you see it's ambidextrous, does absolutely nothing. And if you pull it at a weird angle, it does kind of feel like it's sticky, but that's just me being a bit special. Ambidextrous fire selector. And then this is your access to your hop unit there. So you can adjust the hop. It's a rotary style hop unit, but I'll show you this later. And here's the mag release. We've got three contact, three points to release the mag. So one by the magwell. 78 round AR-10 style mag. And that comes with the gun. Then we also have a mag release in front of the trigger on the left and a mag release by the trigger on the right. The MDR feels really comfortable to shoulder. <clears throat> it just, everything falls into place. You have a full riz on the top here. And what I really like is the fact that your trigger finger can then just be used to drop the mag, fresh one in, carry on. <clears throat> The rifle itself as it comes out of the box is 700 millimeters long. It's fairly short. And if anyone needs to know, it's about 210 millimeters tall with the mag. So we're gonna drop the mag out. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the barrel swap and how to get access to your hop unit. Very similar system, it's a Desert Tech system. But the first thing we're gonna do is just loosen these two bolts on the handguard. We don't take these out, they just need to be loosened off. If you do take them out, it's not a problem to take them back. Punch this pin out here. You can see why the punch tool is very handy when it comes to working around this rifle. Again, we're gonna switch to this new camera view just to try and give you a better idea of what's going on. If the handguard's a little bit too stiff to take off, all you need to do is just perhaps loosen these two bolts up a little bit more, like I'm doing here. The rule, the golden rule is don't force anything. So now that's off there. What we're gonna do is you can see we have a locking bolt here and then two tension bolts here. So we're just gonna release these off. Set it to unlock. Anyone with an SRS, this will be, or HTI, this will be very familiar. 
<coughs> and the outer barrel and hop unit drop straight out. The Micron kit, which is rumored to be coming out later this year, will bring the rifle to about here. That's the look I'm gonna go for when it comes out. So, to release your hop unit and inner barrel from the outer barrel, two mil, two mil Allen screw on either side. Hex screw, Allen screw, whatever you wanna call it. And then it slides straight out. The MDRX will come with a 420 millimeter inner barrel. And the hop unit itself is a tallless construction. We, I was gonna do a video on the hop unit disassembly, but I think it's best to wait for the seal back video on that because it'll be uh, more concise to be honest. Solid outer barrel, no barrel spaces, which also means if you did wish to run a short barrel, go straight in, no problem. Or a longer barrel, as long as you've got a suppressor to cover up at the end, equally won't be a problem. Under the flash hider, you'll see later on, it's a 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread. So that takes the majority of airsoft suppressors and accessories. And then we're just gonna drop it straight in. When you put this back in, just make sure the hop unit is the right way up. You should see a small gap in the riz at the top there, as you can see. Now the first thing I always do is set to lock. So that's the, re the reverse of how you take it out. And then bolt one, tighten, bolt two, tighten, but do it gently by hand. Go from one to two, one to two, bolt one to bolt two, bolt one to bolt two, until it is just hand tight. That's all it's needed. Please, again, just don't wrench on these. They don't need to be super tight. And the tin is solid, it's not going anywhere. Hand guard, straight back on. Again, the golden rule is just look at all points. Don't force it. Don't try and manhandle it into position. If it's not going, it's because something is just out of slight alignment. Once it goes in, then we can push that push pin back in there, tighten these two bolts up, and the hand guard will be secure. I'm hoping the new camera angle doesn't make, give you any sort of motion sickness, it's just to try and give you my view of when I'm uh, working on the rifle that I can't get on these other two cameras. So next, access to the hop unit as we said before is there, it's a rotary hop unit. If you're struggling to get into the hop unit or you wish to swap over the access from the left to the, from the right to the left, vice versa, you can do this screw here, this plate comes off here, and then you've got bigger access there. Now we'll also leave the, if you wanted to change the PCU board, it's a good idea to take these two um, side panels off, just to give you better access. <clears throat> and as you can see now, you can just drop that in there, and then you can make it accessible via the left hand side if you wish. You'll also see the upper is connected to the lower by three push pins. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push these out. It's easier if you give yourself some room and make sure you're pushing centrally. One, two and three. And just make sure these are pulled out to the point they click. If they come out in your hand you can just push them back in. It's not going to be a big drama. And as you can see, that then separates the upper from the lower. I'm gonna have a quick look at the lower first. Now you might, this is the, um, the mag release transfer bar. This may come out, it's not been screwed in place, but it's very easy to put back. So I'm gonna show you an example. Sometimes it might come out when you've taken the lower out and it, was, it won't connect to all three points. As long as you just make it connect, it'll be fine. So you've got a hole at the front, it's like a bridge piece in the middle, and then a slot at the back. It's really simple. Seal back again, making things nice and simple, very easy access, easy to work on. So you can see here, this is your trigger board. It's held in with two screws, and then it connects all the way through to the motor at the back. 
this is your DMR tree board. I'm not going to swap this over on this occasion, but you can see this is where it plugs in and you need to make sure that cable does run under that plate because that's where your mag will come in. You don't want that wire exposed. Mm. On the second bolt, you'll see there's a small rubber, clear rubber washer. That needs to go in that second bolt to make sure the screw doesn't interfere with the board. Now the spring change itself, as you can see here, again, very quick, very simple, five mil Allen key. In, you push down, turn and release. And it's held in with three, three uh, points of contact. I'm gonna keep this as an AEG. So this is gonna be on the AEG power spring. When we do a shooting test video, which will be coming up soon, we'll show you the power ratings and flight and in-game, how the gun reacts, etc., etc. So when you do change this, this is where it plugs in. And you'll, have, you'll see there's three seal contacts. They go to that side of the connector. You'll, you'll, fit, you'll, you'll connect where it won't. Again, golden rule, don't force anything. Take a step back, have a look, try something else. Or if you bought it from Longbow, give us a call. Send us an email, whatever. So we're gonna just put these back. When you put these side panels back on, just make sure the hole lines up exactly. There should be no resistance when you're screwing these back in. If you meet resistance, stop, take the screw back out, have another look, look make sure that it's, it's all lined up. Again, any problems, give us a call. We'll help you out if we can. I'm gonna put the, the ejection, I think that's the uh, the shell ejector on the rear still, but for us it's the whole access panel. Again, just making sure the screw holes all line up. And when that screw goes in, no resistance at all. Straight in, don't over tighten it just needs to be hand tight and then that's done that also holds the, the whole the gearbox and the motor in place so this is called a PCU jumper and as you'll see there's three pins on the back of the motor here which is where this connects to the top two pins if you want to use a 7.4 volt lipo battery and if you put it between the bottom two pins can only cover two pins that's if you want to disable the safety at all. And that's generally, from what I understand, for a lower power, like 20C discharge, 11.1 um, uh, batteries. The battery compartment is fairly small, as you'll see here. The actual sizes are on the uh, Silvac website on the user manual and obviously in the uh, instruction book that you, you get. I know that Titan are on the case, they're gonna make a battery that will fit. Uh, I'll show you the battery that I have that does fit. I have had to enable the PCU jumper on the disable mode in order for it to cycle. Which is why you saw the PCU jumper on the bottom two pins of this rifle. Now, if you only engage the first push pin, then it'll basically open similar to like a I suppose like an M4. And that's the rifle back together. <clears throat> now, what I'm gonna do is to show you how I store the battery. I'm gonna take off the QD sling point here. You don't have to do this. This is purely, I'm doing this purely to give you a better view of how the battery will fit. The battery that I have is a, it's a slim, AK stick battery. I can only get them in Tamiya connect uh, with a Tamiya connection, and I know my limits, and I'm not going to try and change it to Dean's myself. So I'm going to take off the rear butt pad. Again, this is just to give you a better view. I need to also include there's a stick battery. Include an adapter which goes from Tamiya to Dean's because these all the MDR is are wired to Dean's. You can see that's the. Uh, that's the adapter there. So battery fits very nicely in this compartment here. And again, just to make it easy to connect up, it's easier if you just release the two pins, then you can swivel open the rifle 
plug the battery in. Make sure the polarity is the same with your adapter. Make sure that no one's got anything crossed over. And then make sure that you can plug it in properly like that. Again, when you're closing the upper and the lower, just make sure you're not fouling any wires or getting anything stuck. This is the method I found easiest. Just fold it over. Yeah, that's how it sits there like that. Now I'm going to put the butt stop back on. The butt pad, sorry. Nothing's getting snagged. Nothing's getting squashed. Nothing's under too much pressure here. So we're, we're going to be quite comfortable. Again, sling swivel can go back on. You wouldn't need to do this. I took it off purely to just give you a better view. now tightened up push the last pin make sure that that's sitting down as it should these pins they can be quite stiff to start make sure all pins are in put it on semi and there you can see the gun's actually forcing itself back under its own action and then on to full auto because we're again on a G board not the DMR board trigger response is phenomenal in these it's really something to behold seal back have done a great job so here's the 78 round mag now i know that there are some uh pts 150 round mags which you know it's going to catch your attention you're thinking well i'm almost doubling my mag count apparently you get over 120 rounds in those mags and they don't feed great the other thing is the springs in them if you're using this on full auto they can they're not so, so good as the silverback springs in the mags to get the BBs up for the rate of fire, because it's a very high rate of fire. I don't know the exact rate of fire. Um, again, we'll do that on the shooting test video. This is just an over, overview. Uh, but if to be, to be fair, I would stick with the silverback mags for now. And <clears throat> I can't see full auto really being that, need, that needed. Shooting someone on the semis far more gratifying. Anyhow, let's take off the muzzle brake. You see there's two mil grub screw at the bottom. Then that looks unwind. As I said, it's a 14 mil counterclockwise thread. Many, many options to go on the end of this. Tracer units, suppressors, etc. I've got a 14 mil short hex suppressor. So I'm just going to put this on just to show you what that, look, what that looks like. We do have these in stock as well. Anyone that has got a pre-order for the MDRX, uh, if you wish to add anything to the order, let us know. We can refund any additional postage. Our MDRXs are due to leave Hong Kong on the 20th of Jan. Normally takes about three to five days thereafter, assuming there's no delays. This is how I'm going to run my MDRX. I've got a short dot there, say two to eight times zoom, 32 mil tube. Other options could be a red dot, red green dot with a magnifier. I think the distances that I've seen these shoot so far, I'm could just be my eyesight, but I think the dots aren't really going to. I think the BB is going to go far, a lot further ahead than what you can see. But as I said, hopefully this is giving you a good insight as to what to expect. We'll get our MDRs out as soon as we can. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.